Hi, my name is Tom and welcome to the video called Big Picture Training where I will do my best to give you as much insight into Big Picture as possible within 45 to 60 minutes. That will be my goal for this video. It's obviously not enough to actually go through everything that Big Picture has to offer because uh, we as Genius Gecko, we provide all kinds of services around this amazing tool. Uh, we also can help you compare this tool to other project management tools and also help you implement it, fully train you. And talking about a full training, it actually takes two days. So if I'm going to try to put as much of it as possible into one hour, that's definitely going to be a big challenge. But fear not, I have an idea how to do that in a way that will actually be beneficial, right? So we will just scratch the surface, sail on, 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 the, on the waves, like above the surface, so that uh, we don't have to go anywhere deep, but still at the same time, you will be able to get as much of the interesting and uh, business relevant information out of the tool as possible. And this is why we are starting here. We are starting here on the screen that belongs to a Jira project itself. That's because if you have a project and you want to simply start working with the data that you have inside of that project by using Big Picture tool, and Big Picture is already installed on your instance, of course, then all you have to do is go here to the left side. There is a menu item called Big Picture. You pick this, and basically this contains a very simple wizard that allows you to start off with your project management almost immediately. All you have to do is choose one of the templates that are available over here and click start working. So <clears throat> because I want to show as much as possible of the tool itself, I'm actually going to go for a hybrid project. It's the most complicated setup, uh, I think. So I'm not, again, going to dive into why it's configured like this and how exactly it works, but it will still allow me to show both the agile part of it and the waterfall part, uh, the Gantt chart, right? So that's why I'm going to choose the hybrid project. Let's start working with the data that we have, have over here. By the way, the project that I have here um, underneath uh, my, my big picture training video sample data contains sample data. So you will see, like in here, that all of the tasks are one day long tasks over here. I can zoom in a little bit and you can see that all of them are one day long tasks and all the data is kind of whatever we start with. So immediately what happened is we got ourselves a pure big picture view screen nested, so to say, in the project screen. Now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm actually going to move away from this screen so that we can have it viewable as a full screen option. So I'm going to go directly to big picture like this and this will show me the list of all the projects, all the portfolios or the programs that I have on my instance. You will see that there are quite a lot of them. And since we are on this screen, it's a perfect opportunity to mention that everything you see over here is called a box. And box is like a basic building um, element of big picture and boxes allow you to contain your project data, but they also allow you to create a hierarchy. A structure. So you can build portfolios out of boxes, you can build programs out of boxes, you can break boxes down into smaller pieces to, for example, divide the work into sprints, right? Or quarters or iterations or teams maybe, right? So boxes give you a lot of flexibility and actually understanding what a box is, how it works and uh, what kind of different settings the boxes can help you with this is a cu crucial part of actually using Big Picture. But of course, <laughs> during this video, we don't have the time to get inside um, all of those details. But the good thing is that Big Picture comes with the templates that I've just used. So our box is kind of pre-created for us. So I have it over here, Big Picture Training Video Sample Data. I'm clicking it and immediately this takes me to uh, inside of the box. And what's inside of the box depends on what kind of template you've used, and then this will determine what kind of modules are available to you. Where those modules are? Over here. So I'm currently looking at the Gantt module, but if I 
click this, you will see that I have a list of several more modules to work with. And all of those are very interesting. Also, another thing to notice is that whenever you're inside the box, you're working with a specific set of data. And this set of data will be determined by the dropdown you have over here. So if I'm currently uh, looking at Big Picture Training Video Sample Data, everything that I have within that Jira project will be inside of my box. Whether I look at the Gantt or whether I go to my resources, right? I will be looking at the same set of data. This is, of course, configurable again. So you can go into the box configuration. You can change that if needed. But it also is changeable just by switching to a different box, right? So if I hit here and try to switch to a different box and just click the name of a different box, some of them you can see I have marked as favorites, then I can quickly switch my view to a different project, maybe to a portfolio view, right? Whatever is necessary. But let's focus for now on what we have here in the Gantt module, because this is something that many of you will probably be working with unless you're working pure agile, right? So uh, the basic things get, that can be done over here is building your work breakdown structure, assigning tasks to people, making sure that the estimates make sense, connecting um, those tasks with dependencies between and other tasks, right? So these are the few basic things that absolutely are achievable over here, and I'm going to show those. So let me first maybe switch to a different view, um, maybe less cluttered. So let's switch to the team view. And I would like to see the icon of the task. There we go. I always like to see this. Uh, we have the SNE, we have the skill over here, and we have the status, right? So all of those are pretty important. Skills for us are actually useless. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here and I'm going to remove the skills column. There you go. What we will want to have over here, though, is the original estimate field coming from Jira. That's the one I want to use later on as well. So I will just add it for now. Yeah, there you go, right? So I have the view that I'm comfortable with. You've already noticed that you can quickly switch those view over here. I have, this view is called Teams, but I can now save it under a different name. And I'll say just, this is Tom's view now. Mine. It's all mine. There you go. Right? And then I can start building my work breakdown structure, right? So I can say, okay, so this task is actually, let me grab it, four days long task. This task is in reality, what is it? Six day long tasks. I'm counting working days, right? By the way, there is a field over here that allows you to do that. So there is a field called duration uh, working days. There you go, right? Four working days, six working days. And then I can say, okay, so this task is actually dependable on this task. This one is the predecessor. This one is the follower. And voila, automatically they get scheduled according to the dependencies that I have over here. Now I can also say that <clears throat> actually this task should be started together with uh, the previous one as well. So I might do it like this, right? And it gets immediately rescheduled. I can also move it like that. I can also go over here and say that this task is a five day long task in terms of working days, right? And there you go, the task immediately changes its duration. So this is the way I would start building my work breakdown structure. There are uh, all the necessary dependencies options available over here, so you will feel perfectly comfortable with it. But task duration is not the same as uh, the amount of work that is needed to complete the task, so the task estimate, right? So that's why I have this original estimate field, field here. For those of you that know Jira, this is a standard Jira field. No magic over here, standard Jira field. So Big Picture is reusing the Jira features as much as possible, which is absolutely fantastic. So over here, I can say that this task has a duration of wor four working days and has the original estimate of four days as well. This task has six days of the, uh, of the duration, but the estimate is actually just three days, right? So we, we expect someone that maybe will be working just half of the time on this task during the whole task duration. This one, let's say that this one has an estimated um, work of just one day, right? And for this one, just for the sake of the example, I will say two days and four hours. There you go. You can do that as well. Perfect. So we have our estimates now added to the tasks. Um, of course, now it would make sense to assign some resources, right? But 
where are the resources going to come from now? So you can see that some of the tasks actually have the assignee, me. So I'm assigned to some of those tasks automatically. Again, because it's demo data, right? Now, there are two ways of handling resources in Big Picture in terms of where you can do that, of course. So you can go here and click Show Hide Resources, and then you will see, okay, Tom is here, and then the rest of the tasks are unassigned. Okay, that gives me some information. You can also change over here the effort mode if you want to. I will switch to original estimate because that's what I'm using, and I will switch to daily aggregation. There you go, and we can see now that um, we have some numbers over here. They are all in red, signifying obviously that something is wrong, and also uh, we can see that all of those are coming from the unassigned, and let's just check, yup, 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 right. all of those tasks that I gave estimates to are unassigned. Okay, so wh where is the rest of people that can be working on those tasks? They, they aren't here, that, that's okay. They will appear as long uh, as you assign someone else than myself um, to these tasks. So let's try to do that. I'll double click over here and I will say that I want the arrow to be assigned to this task. There you go. And he immediately appears and his time booked is automatically four hours every day because I gave him a task that is five days long and it has an estimate of two days and four hours, so half of the time, which is four hours per day from the standard eight-hour workday. Makes sense, right? Um, let's change this one as well. On this one, I will say that Kaya is the one that should be working on the task. And then Kaya will appear here as well, and she is fully booked now, eight hours, right? because this task is four days long, four days worth of work, so it totally makes sense. What will happen if I would reassign this task now to Yaro? Sorry, here. Of course, I would get a warning and Yaro no longer would be green, not even yellowish, he's red, which indicates that he's of course overloaded and I should redistribute the work somehow else. Um, another place where you can manage the, those resources is, of course, the resources or the workload module. So let's go over there. And if I go over here, you will see that I have the same list of people available. The view is a little bit different, but again, I can customize it the way I want it to be. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to change the aggregation back to daily. So that's the view we were uh, looking at previously. And now the numbers will kind of uh, make more sense. Although, instead of getting 12 hours over here, I'm getting minus 4 hours. So it's showing me how much Yarek is overloaded over here uh, by, by what number of hours. But again, this is customizable. So, for example, if I want to look at the workload itself, I will go back to the original 12 hours from the previous screen. And then I, can, I have exactly what I wanted. If I click over here, I can see, okay, eight hours are coming from this task, four hours are coming from this task. Yeah, it makes sense that he's overloaded. What can I do with it? Hmm, well, uh, let's assign task number four, so this one, to someone else, right? And I can do this by double-clicking here on his name and picking a different person, or I can click this bullseye icon, and this will search inside the resources available um, and it will give me a suggestion of the person that maybe is better suited to handle this work. And it suggests me. So I'll click it and the task will get automatically reassigned to me. Therefore, the attack is now yellow, which is good, fully loaded. And I am green for hours so far. And I still have space to have more tasks assigned to myself, right? So, of course, you can see that managing resources over here absolutely works. Uh, what I want to mention is that you don't have to work just with individual resources over here. There's a tab that allows you to work with teams. So if you have a bigger company and you want to do the team-based planning, absolutely doable over here. Also, if you're planning long-term projects, you're doing the long-term planning, one year ahead, two years ahead, right? And of course, this is not done on the level of indiv individuals. It's just not possible and not feasible. Again, team planning over here will be very, very handy. But in all the purposes and features that it has, it's basically the same as the individual planning. It just takes the data from a different field in Europe, and that's it.
Okay? Another thing that is worth mentioning over here is that Big Picture also works with skills. So if you want to do the skill-based planning, again, possible and, and absolutely doable and actually quite fun. So if you want to roll with that, the Big Picture will also help you manage your resources through skills. Pretty cool. All right. Yeah, I'm thinking if I want to mention something else about resources because I'll probably not come back here anymore. But I think this is more or less it, what we want to learn from this simple training intro. All right, so let's go back to our account view and let's see whether we want to do anything else over here. I'll hide, hide the resources module and um, I'll just take a look around. So creating tasks, adding tasks from over here is absolutely something that you will be using. Maybe this is actually something that I should show you, right? So if you want to add a new task, you just select the task which you want your new task to appear under and then you just go over here and you say create a new Jira issue. You will be presented with a standard Jira issue create screen, so nothing fancy over here. You choose the type that you want to create and let's say that I want to just create a simple task and I'll name it very creatively, just a simple task, hit create and just a few moments later, without doing anything, the screen will refresh itself and my simple task has just been added to the list. It's one day long, it doesn't have any estimates, it, it is not assigned to anyone. So just like all the other tasks uh, from the beginning, right? And of course, now you can modify, it, modify the task and do whatever is needed to that task. So that absolutely works. Of course, you can also build here the hierarchy, right? So if I now want this task to be a child of the task that is um, above it, I can just grab it over here, drop it like this, and there you go, right? We can see the connection now. This task is a child, this task is a parent. It's been automatically made. Um, also, there is a very smart feature called Structure Builders that works in the background. You don't really see it. It's configurable. And this is one of the most amazing features of Big, Pictures, Big Picture because all of the data that we see over here is coming from Jira, of course. And sometimes you will want to, for example, see this connection, parent-child connection, inside the Jira environment as well, without looking at the big picture screen, right? You're just looking at your task uh, like, like that over here. You're just looking at your issue. And from this screen, you want to be able to figure out that this simple task has a parent and this parent is whatever it is, right? So structure builders allow you to do that on this instance, they are not configured, so that's why we don't see it, but it's definitely something that I want to draw your attention to because it allows you to see all the necessary connections outside of Big Picture as well, and it also allows you to create any kind of reports that you will want to get, even the most advanced ones. So Big Picture has a reporting module, we will probably visit it for a sec, but if you want to use more advanced reporting because you have very specific needs, this feature will be something that is absolutely crucial, crucial. Yeah, all right, so um, managing scope, importing tasks from files. So this, is, um, this has all, all, the, all to do with templating, which is also super important for the tool adoption and ease of use. We always do, do that during our implementation process, uh, but no time to do into this now. Now, some features that I just want to mention. So period mode controls how automatic the rescheduling of the tasks over here in your work breakdown structure is going to be. So uh, absolutely something to um, take into account. And if you use the auto modes, then the tasks will be automatically reshuffled. If you want to work with manual, this is the one for you. If you want some elements to be locked in place, for example, milestones, then this is also something that you will want to use. By the way, talking about milestones, what if this task is actually a milestone? Convert to the milestone, one click, the task changes its shape and now it is a milestone. And if I would like this task now to be locked, I can go over here, I can do period mode, locked, and now this task is not movable. And if I would like to now connect this milestone with something else with the dependency, this milestone wouldn't move, it's locked, right? So that's definitely something that will be useful. Uh, baselines, if you want to create baselines, available in Big Picture. Grouping tasks, awesome functionality that allows you to slice the view that you currently have and present it in a completely different fashion. Amazing for any kind of quick reporting or digging into your 
project data. Really, really cool things. Um, period warnings, so that you stay informed. Progress indicator on the taskbar. I can actually enable that. We don't see it yet, but we will soon in a moment, right? So let me keep it uh, enabled. Critical path. You can highlight the tasks that belong to a critical path very quickly. You can highlight the tasks that are overdue. We don't have any right now, but let's assume that this task would actually be over here and automatically it's 13 days long. Uh, I, forget, I forgot that I have the dependency, so obviously I would have to move the whole group like this and then the whole group would be light. This task by 11 days, this task by six days, this task just by one day, but still, right? So a beautiful example of um, how Big Picture helps us keep track of what is on time and what is not. Another thing that is really worth looking into is the what-if scenarios. So I'm currently looking at the live scenario, but I can also create an alternative scenario and then start working with it without synchronizing the data with Jira yet. And if I feel comfortable with my new look and feel of my um, project plan, then I can hit submit button um, and it will get synchronized with Jira only when I want to do it. So another very cool feature. Um, and one more thing that I want to add before we go into filling in the data over here is that also there is also an info bar on the right side that again helps you to find information tasks issues inside your work breakdown structure by dependencies, overdue tasks, milestones, critical path, and you can also review the changes in the history of those tasks. So pretty cool stuff, right? Now, um, let's go back to what we have over here and let's say that now work on the level of those tasks actually is happening. So I'm going to open this task in a new window and I'm going to switch to it over here. It's loading. And we're going to do two things. First of all, we're assuming that we're working on this task now, so we will change the status to in progress, okay? And now if I go back to big picture screen, you will see that this status information automatically changed to in progress. I didn't refresh the screen, nothing, right? So it, it, it works very, very smoothly. Now, another thing that I want to do over here is I want to say that I've actually done some work on this task. And I'll say that I've spent one day working on it. And I will report it as a long logged time. So you can see that standard Jira screen shows me that one day is logged, three days are remaining. Let's go back to big picture and see what happened over here. So our original estimate did not change. It's still four days, right? But if I would enable over here a field called time spent, this would show one day. But I actually don't have to do it even because um, we've enabled the visibility of the progress on the level of the taskbar. And now you can see that there is some progress recorded over here, right? The darker part is what already has been done. The lighter part is what hasn't been completed yet. If I would now go over here and, and add more time as a logged work, let's say another day and save. Then I'll go over here again without refreshing even anything. I will see that voila, the progress has been moved to 50% because four days out of, sorry, two days out of four have been completed, right? The task is obviously still late because uh, it should have been done 11 days ago and it's not, but um, you know, there is progress, right? Uh, let's go to the level of this task, task number three. And on this task, I'm going to say, it's this one, it's loading. So on this task, I'm going to say that, um, first of all, some time has already been spent working on it. Let's say that it was six hours. So let's say, let's say the task was overestimated, right? So we've spent six hours on it and it's done, it's done. So I'll come over here we can see that the progress in terms of hours um, is almost full, but the task is no longer light, right? Notice that it's no longer marked as light because it's done. So, you know, it took a little bit less than expected. It's completed, nothing to worry about anymore, right? So this is how it would work if you would be working with the progress of your tasks. Of course, you don't have to be working with the time estimates. You can be working just with statuses and it's going to function all right, right? You don't have to be working with numbers if you're not doing it in your day-to-day -day business. So there are choices over here in Big Picture. All right, anytime. We've spent quite a lot of time in the Gantt module, but I think this Gantt is quite widely used. So I wanted to show you as many of the cool features over here as possible. 
Of course, I didn't touch all of them. There is still a ton more here that I could tell. And there are lots of details that are also important, but we just uh, don't have time in this video to cover everything. One more thing maybe that I will mention is filters. Configurable, again, super useful for filtering out the views that you want to have, super useful for any kind of uh, additional reporting that you want to do. So lots of that stuff can happen actually inside the Gantt module and you don't have to use the dedicated reports module that is also available over here. All right, from the Gantt module, I will switch very quickly to the scope module because the scope module is actually quite similar to the Gantt. It's like left part of the Gantt. So you don't have the chart, you just have the table with data. But essentially everything that you can see here in the table is uh, the same as you can see in the Gantt module, right? So uh, if you want to be working with the data without the Gantt chart, this is probably the better place to come because you have then the full screen to work with and it works a tiny bit faster, but um, essentially in terms of the functionality is the same as on the Gantt, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time here. But instead, we will move to the Objectives module. Objectives module is a very cool place where you get to plan your objectives for, or, or goals per se, or the tasks or issues that have to happen inside your project, right? So kind of you're, you're thinking kind of what is our desired outcome? Where are we aiming at? What we want to achieve, right? And this module allows you to do that. Now, because I've created this module from scratch and I don't have any data here, and it would take um, inconvenient amount of time to fill it in, I'll, I'll actually switch to a different box where I have some data. So we, we have uh, two things needed over here to actually show something. So we have to have another level of boxes under our main box. So that's, that's why it didn't show anything in the previous box, but it shows data here because here I have sprints, sprint two, sprint three, sprint four, right? And underneath those sprints, I can enter now my objectives. And you can see that my objectives are divided into sections. So I have main objectives for everyone. And I have also objectives for specific teams, or um, to be more accurate, I could have them because they are not added. But you can just hit the plus and you can enter a new objective. And then this objective automatically belongs to the team. If you want to um, manage the objectives with plant business value and achieve business value, this is also perfectly doable over here. And you can say something like that, for example. You can also change the status of these objectives. So we can, for example, say that this objective has been completed. And there are, again, many more things that can be done in the objectives module, but that's a story for another video or maybe the, the training, the full training. So one thing I want to emphasize over here and I don't want you to like uh, skip th this module because you don't understand it, is that objectives module is very, very important for actually managing your people inside the organization because it helps to give them direction and it helps to push them to be um, more self-sufficient and to make smarter decisions without always looking uh, behind at their um, CEOs, directors, or people that are administering their work. So uh, I absolutely think that this is something you should definitely take a look at and if possible, implement inside your project planning processes. Okay, let's move on. So resources we've already visited. Teams. Teams is something that is quite strictly connected to the resources module because here I told you in the resources module you can manage your um, tasks by teams, right? And of course those teams have to come from somewhere and this is where they come from. This is where you can define what teams uh, you have working on the data inside your box, but also you can re reuse something that is called global teams. So this will be very, very useful if you want to do something that is called the team-based planning. And in general, um, the team definition is available here. Every team can have members. So if I go over here, for example, I can see that the, this team has two members. You can define when the members are available to the team. What is their availability? So for example, you can say that someone is working on this current, um, particular project only for 50% of their time. So not everybody has to be working full-time of the project. Super useful because if you have people working on several different projects, then you can automatically configure it over here. Um, and then it also takes the skills, if the person has any skills assigned, 
and of course uses all that information inside the resources module to help you plan those resources more efficiently. So Teams, uh, not a very complicated module, but absolutely necessary. Uh, let's move on to the risks module. Another amazing part of Big Picture because the risks module allows you to control all the things that might happen in the future and you should definitely account for them while doing the planning. So again, not a lot of data over here, but let me switch to a different box and let's visit this one. I think that this one should have something. It's refreshing the data, but there we go, right? There we go. So the risk module allows you to look at the data either in, in this kind of a matrix view and all the risks that I have defined here uh, are shown as those cards visible. Uh, but you can also take the table view, if you prefer this one, and then again, the list of risks is available. Each risk has a risk probability and risk consequence values. Um, each risk can have a person assigned to that risk. And basically, because those risks are essentially JIRA issues, you can put any kind of information necessary on the level of those issues. So that's pretty amazing. And this is absolutely everything that you need in terms of managing your risk. So um, doing it over here is as easy as clicking the plus over here and saying create a new JIRA issue, so a risk, or add an existing task which is not currently defined as a risk, but we want to associate it now with a risk as well. And then you will be able to just add a task over here very, very easily. If at some point in time you decide that, okay, this task um, is no longer low and very high in terms of respectively consequence and probability, but maybe it should belong over here, you just drag and drop it and it is moved immediately to a different cell in the matrix. Um, now has high consequence instead of low consequence, right? So uh, it's as simple as that. And one last feature I want to mention over here is that you can also use this magnifying glass to make those risk cards a lot bigger. So if you're taking a risk review meeting, for example, once in a while, would you probably should, then this is a great feature to just go through those tasks during that meeting, review what's, uh, what has to be reviewed, discuss it, and to make sure that everything is on track, even from this level, inline editing is possible and you can edit the information if you would like to and change things. So absolutely cool and absolutely useful to have the risk module enabled and to actually use it in your project planning and execution later on. And two more elements that uh, I want to go through. So the calendar view, something that is helpful especially for the team members to see what is actually going on inside the project, what is on their plate and what is coming to their plate. Let me switch the box again because we want to have a little bit of a different view and a little bit more, uh, more data. So I'll do this and okay. So I wanted to have a little bit more data available but apparently the data is actually not available over here because all the tasks are planned already in the past. Yes, they are planned in the past. So we would have to modify it a little bit. So let's just drag everything and drop it somewhere in the future. It's okay, it's my demo data. It's going to be all right. And going back to the calendar view, now we can see that our upcoming tasks sidebar over here is getting filled is getting filled with what's actually going to happen today, tomorrow, on the 6th, 7th, 8th of October, and so on, right? So this is pretty handy because this allows you to see as a project manager what is on your plate, but you also can apply filters over here. So you can just uh, come here as a user and you can say, show me my tasks. I want to see only on, on what's on my plate, right? And then you get this filter applied and you can see only what refers to you. Also, you have to note that I have uh, the end date mode enabled over here. So that's why all the tasks look like one day long tasks, but it doesn't have to be that way. So we can disable it. And then they, they are nicely visible over here. It's just bars um, going through your calendar. So this is probably more intuitive view, but it's a little bit hard to read when your tasks are very long. So that's why I sometimes switch to the end date mode over here. Anyway, a pretty cool thing 
Um, very useful when you're used to working in kind of like a calendar view. We have customers that prefer this type of work and uh, we also do sometimes the implementation that actually focus on having all the important data available rather over here than in the Gantt module, right? All right, and um, out of all the non-agile things, we have one more thing that I want to visit and that's the reports module. And this is basically the place where all the reports um, available inside the big picture are stashed. And this is where you can come and review the data that is available inside your project or, or your portfolio, because you can also aggregate the data, of course, on the level of those. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of those, but I'm going to mention that there is quite a lot of uh, report capabilities over here. So if you want to add the report, you have several to pick from and all of them are super useful but also a lot of reporting is actually going on inside the modules themselves. So I, when I was, for example, talking about the Gantt, I've mentioned that lots of the things available in the Gantt help in um, getting a different view of your data, therefore getting different kind of information out of what, uh, what is stored over there. The same will happen in the resources module, the same will happen in the objectives module, the same will happen in the board module that I will visit right after the, the, the reports that we're looking at right now, okay? So you have to absolutely remember that. And last thing in terms of the reports that you need to also realize is that Big Picture is reusing Jira data. Therefore, all the data is basically in Jira. Therefore, if you go to Jira and any other add-on to Jira, any other app that allows you to create reports, um, this data will also be available over there. So you can do the reports from um, any other place outside of Big Picture too. Very cool stuff. All right. Last module that I skipped because it's agile and I wanted to keep it uh, for, for the last is the board module. So if you go to the board module, first of all, again, you need this lower level of boxes, right? So that's why I'm looking at sprints one, two, three, four over here, actually without one, one is already completed. Um, and then if you have those sprints, then your tasks are visible here as again, cards, similar to the risks, mo risks module, right? They are also divided into sections. So similarly to the objectives module in this case, and we have unassigned tasks, not assigned to any team, and then team specific tasks for, in this case, free course team and free course super team, right? And you can also see a very important element, which is dependencies, dependencies between those tasks within the same team or even cross team dependencies, right? This is something that is usually the most difficult part, not only to plan, but actually later on to, make sure while execution that nothing goes wrong around those tasks because those dependencies need to be handled. There are separate reports for those uh, dependencies. So we can, of course, um, take some precautions by using those reports. But just the fact that those dependencies are visible over here is already a huge step forward. And basically what you can do over here is switch from uh, switch from your um, capacity allocation that I'm looking right now. So this is the view that is dedicated for the planning process. And basically what it gives me is the information that, for example, this free course team has 20 out of 20 story points planned within this sprint too. So if I would, for example, uh, grab another task, but before I grab it, I want to see the uh, story points, right? Story points. Let's add the story points to the column so that I can, I can grab a task that actually has some values. Uh, so this one, for example, has three story points, right? So if I grab this task and put it into the area over here, automatically it changes to 23 story points planned out of 20 story points available for this team. And I get a warning that this team is now overloaded. It cannot be like this. We need to fix this, right? So maybe something has to be moved somewhere else. The important part is that the picture handles um, this uh, this for you and allows you to uh, see who's or which team actually in this case is overloaded which is not so that you can structure the data properly plan the data properly and then move forward with the execution and when you switch to the execution so I will switch totals to work progress then they are showing me how many of those planned story points are currently finalized and we have only one task that is done over here it's worth three story points Therefore, I have three story points out of 23 planned that are completed. Therefore, the progress is 13%. And you will get it for every team, for every box, every sprint in this case. So uh, something that uh, is absolutely 
necessary for your planning and execution. It works just fine, very smoothly. You saw me just dragging things from over here to over here, and that's how simple the planning is. Uh, I can multi-select over here, of course, uh, to, to select multiple elements at one time and drag them into the proper box on the left side, proper team. So basically everything that you would dream of over here is um, available. And on top of this, this also can synchronize with Jira. So if you're working with Jira boards, for example, and you already have teams that are working with uh, Jira boards, Kanban boards, Scrum boards over there, then you can synchronize those boards over here with Big Picture. But Big Picture gives you the capability to see those boards here in one place coming from many different teams and connect all of those beautifully together, see those crossed team dependencies, which are so important, and just have more control over your project and your project data and progress, right? So for those of you that are working Agile, Big Picture definitely has also something to offer and it's not a small thing, it's not a small thing. All right, so these are all important modules. Um, before I leave you to it, I will also mention that the, the, there are elements over here that allow you to configure resources inside the um, administration section. Uh, this kind of, I actually can go there, right? So uh, this kind of configuration allows you to control workload plans, to control holiday plans. You can see it over here, workload plans, holiday plans. This is also where you assign skills, right? So if you're, for example, working with the um, multinational team and people are spread all around the world, they have different holidays, uh, in different times, then this is exactly what holiday plans will help you with. If you have a bigger team and some people are working half of the time, only 50% of the standard FTE, then workload plans will save you in this area. So basically it has all that is necessary to fully manage or completely manage your resources, resource pool, and do the planning properly without making any funny exceptions just because the tool cannot handle the feature that you're looking for. So all in all, um, in our opinion, and we are working with all kinds of tools inside the Atlassian ecosystem for project management, in our opinion, currently, Big Picture is the favorite. It's, it's the best tool available over there. Um, I think that Structure is uh, close second. Structure is definitely close second with all, all the uh, family of, of apps. Um, but if, if you're wondering whether Big Picture will do the job, the answer is that probably yes, probably yes. If Big Picture cannot do it, then there is a small chance that it can be done by other add-ons, but a really small one. So if you're looking into this tool, you're definitely on the right track. If you want to talk more, if you want to talk more about how this tool can help in your particular case, then absolutely reach out to us and we can schedule a free call and just give you our best opinion regarding that and tell you whether Big P you will be a happy Big Picture user or maybe this tool is not for you. If it's not for you, we will try to find you a better solution if it exists and we know of it. Um, also, if you're looking for a more advanced training, and as I said, we provide all kinds of um, services around Big Picture, um, our standard two-day training for key users of Big Picture, which I believe is absolutely necessary for anyone who wants to have a um, uh, well-organized and well-oiled machine uh, working on, on its side for project management, then again, reach out to us or just take a look at the description of this video. There will be a link over there to the page with all the details of our available training, whether it's a two-day training or three-day training with practice exercises or maybe a video training. So you can take your pick. Um, we also help implement the tool from zero, from scratch to a fully functioning product with templates, with uh, proper configuration, with users trained and uh, with carefully um, adjusting also everything for the uh, adoption so that the users, the end users that are actually going to be using the tool are actually happy to work with it. So if you're interested in that, again, all the information in the description of this video. And for now, this is all from me. I hope this has been useful and hopefully see you in the next video. Thanks.